Okay, so imagine the following situation. We have a 3% annual interest rate, and we decide to invest $400 at the end of each year for seven consecutive years. In this video, we will find the final value of those investments, and also the present value of those investments. And as always, the problem is easily solved if we simply visualize the investments on a timeline. So we have the initial time zero, then year one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And we're saying at the end of each year, we invest $400. So this is the beginning of the first year, and now we've reached its end. So we invest $400. At the end of year two, we invest the same amount. And the same goes each year for seven consecutive years. Another question is, what is the, well, the two questions we're going to answer. First, what is the final value of those investments? So the value at the end of the seventh year. And then we'll find the present value at time zero of the same seven investments. So I'll call this simply FV for final value. And this I will call PV for present value. Since we have an annual interest rate of 3% over each unit of time, the interest rate applicable is 3%. So let's first find the final value. Well, we want the value of those seven investments at this particular time. So we have to bring each amount of $400 at time seven, the end of the seventh year. Well, we'll start with this one. 400 is already here, so this is worth 400. Plus, the value of this investment moved forward one unit of time. So this will be 1.03 times 400. Or if you prefer, 400 times 1.03. Plus the value of this investment but now, not once, but two units of time forward in time. Well, let's do it one step at a time. If you bring this investment forward by one unit of time, it is multiplied by 1.03. But again, by one unit of time, it is multiplied again by 1.03. So we have 400 times 1.03 times 1.03, therefore, times 1.03 squared. Let's keep going. And you can probably see the pattern now. So we've brought back this one which was already there, this one forward by one unit of time, and this one forward by two units of time. But what about this one? Well, we have the $400, and then it's moved forward by one, two, three units of time, and for each unit of time, it is multiplied by 1.03. So this will be 1.03 times itself, three times, dot, dot, dot. Then this one will be moved forward by four units of time, by five units of time, and finally by six units of time, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. So it will be the final term is 400 times 1.03 to the 6. As it is moved forward by 6 units of time, and every time it is multiplied by 1.03, 1.03 times itself 6 times, 1.03 to the 6. What's interesting now is we will not calculate the value of these investments after 7 years, so the final value directly, as we 
should recognize this as a simple geometric series. And we can evaluate the result of the series much more efficiently with our summation formula. Let's write this first concisely using sigma notation. So what are the terms like? Well, it's 400 times some power of 1.03. And, well, if there is no 1.03, therefore the power initially is, is 0, as 1.03 to the 0 is 1. So n begins at 0, and it goes all the way up to 6. And now we have a nice geometric series where r is 1.03. And if you recall the formula for a finite geometric series, it goes like this. It is the first term times 1 minus r to the number of terms summed in the summation over simply 1 minus r. Well, the first term is when n is 0, which is simply 400, times 1 minus r, r is 1.03 to the number of terms being summed. And here be careful, it is not 6. It is 6 minus 0 plus 1, therefore 7. When you have a finite sum, the number of terms being summed is always the upper bound of summation minus the lower bound of summation plus 1. And of course, if you go back, it's quite obvious. Payment 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The summation contains 7 terms. Over, of course, 1 minus r. And if you evaluate this with your calculator, you will have been approximately 3,064 dollars and 98 cents. So we now have the final value of those seven investments at the end of each year, after seven years, if we can invest at an annual interest rate of 3%. Now for the present value, PV, there are two ways to uh, think about it. Let's do the simpler way first, and then we'll look at a second way using, again, our knowledge of geometric series. Now that we know the value of those seven investments at times seven after seven years, therefore the final value, we simply have to bring this backward in time by seven years. So the present value can be obtained from the final value, which we now have, and if you remember when we move forward in time by one year, we multiply by 1.03. As we are moving backward in time by one year, each step, we will divide each time by 1.03, as discussed in our previous video. So the final value being here has to be brought back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven years. So it must be divided by 1.037 times. Therefore, 1.03 to the 7. And if you calculate this, you will obtain approximately $2,492.11. That's one way, since we have just found the final value of the investments, to find the present value. Now let's look at this from a different angle, bringing back each individual investment to times zero, and we'll see that we obtain the exact same present value. So this is the shorter solution, or well, we have to bring back this 400 in time by one year, so this will now be worth at times zero 
400 divided by 1.03 plus the second $400 but now being brought back by two years so it will be worth at time zero 400 over 1.03 squared plus and so forth this is brought back by one two three years so at time zero it is worth 400 over 1.03 cubed all the way up to the final investment of four hundred dollars well you can count directly and you will arrive at seven but of course seven minus what will give you zero it is of course seven to bring back seven years to zero you must subtract seven so you must take this four hundred dollars investment backward in time by seven years and once again you should recognize this as nothing but a finite geometric series so we can use the same trick we used for the final value first let's write this concisely with sigma notation I will break the 400 from the powers of 1.03 and now well n begins clearly at 1 all the way up to 7. Now notice that for the final value, as we were moving investments forward in time, r was 1.03. But now for the present value, we moved investments backward in time, and so r is no longer 1.03, but 1 over 1.03. and we can now use the summation formula to evaluate the value of the summation much more efficiently as we've said before it is the first term times 1 minus r to the number of terms being summed over 1 minus r well the first term is when n is 1 so this will be 400 over 1.03 times 1 minus r being 1 over 1.03 to the number of terms which is 7 again 7 minus 1 plus 1 is 7 over 1 minus r and with a calculator you will arrive at approximately and no surprise there the same value we did using a slightly shorter solution two thousand four hundred ninety two dollars and eleven cents now of course why did I present this solution well I could have of course not been asking for the final value at all and only for the present value and if you do not know the final value of the investments the only way to find the present value will be with this solution. And what's nice about this is, as hopefully this illustrated, when you want the value of several investments at any given point either forward in time or backward in time, all that is required of you is the knowledge of the summation formula for geometric series. So to conclude, if we invest $400 at the end of each year for seven consecutive years, the final value is approximately $3,064, the final value, and the present value at time zero is approximately $2,492.11. And in each such problem, you should draw a timeline with the given investments, and it will make it hopefully easier for you to figure out the value, whether it is the final value or present value, as a 
simple geometric series. And that's it.